Will any Seattle Seahawks players win awards for this upcoming 2024 NFL season? What is going on, everybody? Good morning. It is Sunday, and we are on the other side of the preseason now. The Seahawks have played all three of their games. Now we're just waiting for the games to count. We do have a few more preseason games around the NFL today, but as far as the Seahawks go, we're just waiting for that Denver game. We're waiting for the first regular season game, and we're ready to see what's up in 2024. It's going to be a little bit of a wait, though, so I thought now would be a good time to ponder some interesting side elements of the 2024 season, like, say, individual awards. And I want to ask, are there going to be any Seattle Seahawks involved in the conversation of the major or even not so major NFL awards? There are a lot of them. There are a lot of awards out there. The NFL gives out a lot of awards. The Associated Press, generally speaking, is the most respected award giver out there. And there's definitely going to be some presence of the Seattle Seahawks here, even if it's down at like the Pro Bowl level, right? Like there are going to be some Seahawks that make the Pro Bowl. There's probably going to be a Seahawk or two that makes the All-Pro team. The All-Rookie team, you'll probably see a little something there, even if it's just like a, a couple of votes. So there's definitely going to be some. But what about the bigger awards? That's kind of the interesting part, right? So we're going to go through the list here of major NFL awards keeping in mind that there's going to be some that we also pass over. There's going to be some that are technically present, but not particularly uh, official. They're kind of considered a little more frivolous. So we're going to skip some of it, but we're going to take a look at a lot of the big ones. And we're going to try to estimate if the Seahawks have much of a chance of participating in any award ceremonies this year. So uh, we're going to take a look at the various awards, but first, Thank you for watching this video. If you like it, please click the thumbs up button down below. It helps out a lot. Subscribe to the channel if you're new and you want daily Seahawks content. Click the bell for notifications. Become a channel member for $2 a month. Those are the best ways to help support the channel. All right, so let's start with NFL MVP here. NFL MVP, most valuable player, which has become very much a quarterback award over the last, I mean, it's been a little while, but over the last 15 years in particular, since 2007, the award has gone to a quarterback every year with the exception of 2012 when it went to Adrian Peterson, who almost broke a longtime running back record to get that award. So realistically, right now, if you want to win league MVP, you have to be a quarterback. So the only guy on the Seahawks that could win it would be the quarterback, which would be Geno Smith. So is Geno Smith going to be in the MVP conversation this year? I kind of don't think so. And by the way, it is worth noting that Geno Smith has gotten an MVP vote in his career. He literally got a fifth place MVP vote in 2022. So he has been part of the MVP conversation before. The difference is this year, I don't think he's going to have to try to do everything for the Seahawks. In 2022, Geno Smith had to carry so much of the load because the defense was really bad. The running game was mostly pretty good, but there were some games where we were down to the nub because people kept getting hurt. Uh, the offensive line wilted as the season went on. And there, either Geno Smith went out there and won the game for us, or we had a really hard time winning games. So there was a lot of pressure on Geno to keep going, keep going, keep throwing touchdowns, keep throwing for yards, keep going. If you throw interceptions, it doesn't really matter because we're going to lose anyway unless you're going balls to the wall. So there was a lot on him, and for the most part that year he delivered, which is how he was able to put up those big stats that got him an MVP vote. Uh, I don't think that's going to happen this year because our defense is not nearly as bad, or it shouldn't be nearly as bad as it was that year. I think there are some other elements of this team that should be a little bit better. So I don't think every game is going to be like, okay, Gino. We need you to be perfect for us to have a chance to win. Just keep going, keep throwing, keep throwing, keep throwing. It's not going to be like that. So the stats aren't going to be as big. So I can't imagine Geno Smith competing for an MVP award with the likes of Mahomes, Josh Allen, Lamar, maybe resurgent Aaron Rodgers. Although I really doubt that one too, if we're being honest. But 
I think you guys see what I'm getting at here. It's just, uh, I, I can't imagine that happening personally. And I say that as a big Geno proponent, a big Geno fan. Uh, NFL Offensive Player of the Year has kind of become, not entirely, but has kind of become the non-QB MVP, right? They pick an offensive player that is not a quarterback most of the time. Not all the time, but this has kind of become the compromise where they're like, okay, if you are not a quarterback, you have a chance of winning this award, but it's not a guarantee either. We might give it to a quarterback. Like the last five years, they've given it to a receiver, a running back, a receiver, a receiver, a running back. They've given it to running backs and receivers in many previous years. So you have a chance, right? Now, they might give it to Pat Mahomes or Cam Newton or Peyton Manning. They've certainly done that before many times. But at least here you have a real shot. So when I think about the Seahawks players, when I think about Ken Walker, DK Metcalf, JSN, uh, the guys who are going to be very prolific on the offense this year that aren't the quarterback... I don't think any of them are going to pile up the monster numbers that you need to win this award or even begin contention for it because I think this offense is going to be mostly predicated on spreading the ball around a little bit. I think that you're going to see a lot of guys be good, but I don't think you're going to see any one guy be dominant the way that, say, a Justin Jefferson was or a Christian McCaffrey was or a Derrick Henry was. Hard for me to imagine that. Um... I feel like the only guy that has any kind of a chance at all would probably be probably be like DK Metcalf. That would require our defense to not be very good. So the Seahawks have to keep throwing the ball more than I'm expecting. And then they have to decide, you know what? Our best path to success is to just throw the ball to DK 12 times a game. I guess it's possible, but I don't know. I, I think that you're going to see the ball get spread around and no one player is going to put up those kinds of numbers. All right, Defensive Player of the Year. NFL Defensive Player of the Year award, pretty self-explanatory here. I've talked about this award before when we drafted uh, Byron Murphy. <clears throat> and one thing that I found when I was looking at this stuff, the awards they typically give to the defensive players, be it Defensive Player of the Year or Defensive Rookie of the Year, which we'll get to in a second here, the guys that play in the trenches and don't put up big stats, typically do not get rewarded here. They give it to edge rushers a lot. They give it to guys who amass big sack numbers, J.J. Watt, Khalil Mack, uh, Aaron Donald. They'll give it to linebackers that amass big tackle stats, like Luke Keekley. They'll give it to safeties and cornerbacks that put up big numbers, like interceptions and, and uh, tackles. Troy Polamalu, Charles Woodson... Bob Sanders, Ed Reed, they'll give it to guys like that. So looking at the Seahawks team, is anybody on this team going to get like more than 15 sacks this year? I don't think so. I think there's going to be a pretty decent spread, but I don't think anybody on this team is going to go off and have like a 15 sack or, you know, 16 sack season or anything like that. I don't think any linebacker is going to have like 200 tackles or something like that. Um, that's just not how we're going to be playing defense here. doesn't make a lot of sense for that to happen. Um, I guess I could see the, the, the play would be, the only conceivable play would be one of the cornerbacks has a season where they just have like seven or eight inter interceptions combined with good play otherwise, and they can ride that to the award. That's at least conceivable. But I'm also looking at this. I'm looking at last several years. Miles Garrett, Nick Bosa, TJ Watt, Aaron Donald, Aaron Donald, Aaron Donald, Khalil Mack, JJ Watt, JJ Watt. Over the last couple of years, they have been giving it to sack artists. They have been giving it to guys that get to the quarterback over and over and over again. The one exception was Stephon Gilmore in 2019. So you are at a disadvantage if you are not a sack artist. And I projected in my uh, videos I was making like a month ago that a guy like Boye Mafe could get maybe 12 sacks, but I don't think he's going to get up to high enough to where he's legitimately competing for Defensive Player of the Year. And I, as much as I think Devin Witherspoon might play at that level or Woolen could have enough turnovers to be impactful at that level, 
I don't think they'd really seriously enter the conversation. Maybe they'd get like a mention, right? So pretty unlikely to me. Associated Press NFL Rookie of the Year Award. Now this is two awards. They have a offensive winner and a defensive winner. And the defensive winner is a little bit newer. It came around in 67. The offensive winner came around in 57. So these charts are going to be a little bit out of whack here. But again, you're, you're looking at this award, the Offensive Rookie of the Year. It typically goes to a quarterback. Not all, well, I'd say about half the time lately, it feels like it goes to a quarterback. If you look over the last 15 or so years, half the time it goes to a quarterback. We had six quarterbacks go in the top 12. Caleb May, uh, Jaden Daniels, Bo Nix, J.J. McCarthy. Now, J.J. McCarthy's out for the season. And Penix, who won't play. But that's still four quarterbacks. Maybe Drake May's out of it. Maybe Drake May won't play very much this year. But that's still three top. That's still top. I'd say those are your top three guys most likely to win. It, it's just really hard to win this award if there's a good rookie quarterback. If there's a good rookie quarterback, he's probably winning rookie of the year. And, I mean, look, look at something like 2016 when Dak Prescott, who was a complete game manager, won Rookie of the Year over his teammate Zeke Elliott, who clearly had more to do with the success of the Cowboys that year. And it's not easy for me to say something like that. I don't often say that a running back does more for a team than a quarterback, but that year it was certainly true. So <clears throat> um, that probably kind of takes any Seahawk out of the running anyway, but who do the Seahawks have offensively that's like a big impact rookie? They're George Halani, a fourth running back. Uh, I, I I don't really see much of anything happening here. Offensive linemen don't ever win this award anyway. So even if Christian Haynes does start, he's not going to win it. So there's really no opportunity to win anything here. Defensively, I mean, again, I say what I said when I, we were looking at defensive player of the year. They like to give it to... Pass rushers who amass a lot of sacks, linebackers who amass a lot of tackles, cornerbacks who are really shut down or get a lot of interceptions. Occasionally you can find like a safety, I guess, but it's very rare they give it to a defensive tackle, which is what um, Byron Murphy is. And I, I think we can safely conclude that Byron Murphy is the only guy on this team who has any real chance. That's just not something they typically do. The closest I could find when I was going back through Defensive Rookie of the Year award giving out was uh, Tim Bowens of the Dolphins in 1994. That was forever ago. And unless you think Tyrese Knight is going to start and just set the world on fire from day one, really hard to imagine any Seahawks player competing. We, as Seahawks fans, might know at the end of the year that, hey, Byron Murphy was one of the best defensive rookies and deserves some credit here. I don't think the league is going to look at that that way because he won't put up big stats. He'll just be impactful on a per snap efficiency basis more. So I don't really see anything here. NFL Comeback Player of the Year. Uh, we did win this award just a couple years ago, so that was kind of cool with Geno Smith. But this year, um, Abe Lucas? Abe Lucas? Uh... Offensive lineman has never actually won this award. If you take a look at it, if you scroll through it here, they've never given it to an offensive lineman. So I certainly would not bet on that. Last six years in a row, they've given it to a quarterback who's bounced back. So I don't know. May, I, I Maybe Joe Burrow wins it again. Joe Burrow suffered a lot of injuries last year. Wasn't very effective. If Joe Burrow comes back and has a big year, he could win comeback. Um... That would probably be my bet, but um, can't imagine any Seahawks doing it because we don't have guys that are coming back outside of maybe Abe Lucas. And again, I still think that's thin. Um, NFL Coach of the Year. Now, this would probably annoy some people if this actually happened. But I'm going to go ahead and say it. I'm going to go ahead and say it. Um... If the Seahawks have a good year this year, they win like 11 games or more in the regular season. With the way the national media is acting like the Seahawks are going to get a lot worse having lost uh, Pete Carroll, because that, that's what it is. Understand, if you, are so, if you in the national media are someone who thinks the Seahawks are like a six or seven win team this year, 
The only way you can justify that is because you think Pete Carroll's an amazing coach and we're going to lose a bunch of wins without him. So if that doesn't happen, yeah, McDonald should be in there. So, yeah, if the Seahawks are good this year, McDonald needs to be right smack dab in that coach of the year conversation. Because people seem to think that Carroll was doing some masterful job. I, I look around and I see all these people think the Seahawks are going to win like five games this year. I'm not kidding. I see them on YouTube. I see them on writing articles for NFL.com and ESPN.com. I'm like, the only way that makes any sense is if this team was bad and Carroll was propping them up through his genius. So if that's how you feel and McDonald comes in here and takes the Seahawks to uh, beyond where Pete had them the last several years, then... And I hope you're ready to give out the flowers. And that is going to rub people the wrong way because Pete Carroll never won coach of the year when he was in Seattle. So if McDonald comes in here and does it his first year, that's going to rustle some people. But I think it could happen. And I think that it should happen if he has a good year. That you should at least be one of the finalists. I'm sure there will be other coaches like Jim Harbaugh will probably get some credence there. I could see somebody like, um, I mean... Andy Reid hasn't won it recently. Maybe they finally give it to him. They seem really resistant to for some reason ever since he got Mahomes, but maybe this is the year. But something to think about. Uh, this isn't an AP award. This isn't really an NFL award, but executive of the year. Um, I feel like the year to give it to Schneider would have been two years ago when he pulled off the Wilson trade masterfully. I don't think you would give it to him now. So I don't really see this one happening. I don't think that Schneider really did anything over the top amazing this offseason. And if the team does really well this year, I think it'll be more associated with Harbaugh or McDonald than McDonald than um, um, Schneider. So probably nothing here. And that just kind of leaves the team awards. Like, for instance, the All Pro. Do I think any Seahawks will make the All Pro team? Probably Michael Dixon has the best chance, honestly. It always seems like he gets sniped by somebody, but I feel like Dixon will be in a position at the end of the year where he should make All-Pro. Um, I'm going to say one of the cornerbacks makes it too. I just don't know which one, Witherspoon or Woolen. If Woolen gets like eight interceptions, it'll be him. If not, then I think Witherspoon's great all-around play, plus a handful of interceptions will probably get him there. And I, I think that's about it, unless it's a really bad year for running backs and K-9 plays the whole season. But I don't know, someone like Derrick Henry will probably end up beating him and maybe, and Bijan, Bijan will probably be on top there. So I'd probably just leave it at that. I'd say we end up with like two, maybe we can stretch it to three all pros. First team, second team, either way, not really going to push it too far one way or the other in that regard. What about the all rookie team? I think it would be reasonable to say that the NFL All-Rookie team would have Byron Murphy. Again, I don't think he's going to win any Rookie of the Year stuff because of the nature of his position. But if the Seahawks have a good defense this year, they have a good record, and Murphy is getting credit from some of the right people, they'll probably put him on the All-Rookie team. Maybe he'll end up giving up first team to somebody who amasses more sacks. There's probably going to be some interior defensive lineman that puts together more sacks, and that tends to be what people reward, but I think he'll make the team. I think he'll be destructive and dominant and disruptive enough to make the team. Um, <clears throat> Hard to see really anything else. We don't even know if Christian Haynes is going to start. If he does, he'll probably, I'd say he'd probably make it as long as he starts, but I don't get the sense that he's going to. Um, Yeah, I don't really see too much else. Halani's not going to make it. McIntosh might technically qualify as a rookie because he didn't play last year, but I don't think he's going to do enough to make it. Yeah, none of the corners are going to play enough to make it. Yeah, I don't see anything else there. Lomia's not going to make it. So probably just Murphy. And Pro Bowl, Pro Bowl's tough, right? Like Pro Bowl, you could spend a little bit of time pulling apart, but I mean, first of all, what qualifies you as making the Pro Bowl? Do you have to actually make it on the initial ballot or do you can you make it as a replacement? Like, I think Geno Smith might make the Pro Bowl as a replacement, but I'm looking at the conference, I'm like, you've got Brock Purdy, you've got Matt Stafford, you've got, you know, maybe Kirk Cousins, you've got Dak Prescott, you've got some guys that should be in the mix as well. I don't know if Geno would be a favorite to make it as, as like a straight up top three guy. 
So I think Walker would probably make it. I think Walker can be a top three running back in the conference. You got McCaffrey, you got Bijan, and then I think Walker could compete with most of the rest of them. Um, I can see DK making it. I think DK is going to make it. Mm, if Connor Williams stays healthy, I think he'll make it. And then I'm going to say, I'll say Mafe makes it and Witherspoon, maybe Woolen. That's probably about it. Like, I don't think Julian Love will make it this year. I don't think that uh, Murphy's going to make it as a rookie. So we'll just kind of leave it at that for now. Oh, Dixon. Dixon will make it. Um, he better make it. If not, then either somebody messed up or he messed up. All right. So that's really my rundown of it. It's not going to be a big year for the Seahawks in these categories, I don't think. But keep an eye on Coach of the Year. Keep an eye on some of these all pro nods. And let's just uh, let's see what they got. Let's let them surprise us. Let's try to let's give them a chance. And they could make some good stuff happen here. See you guys later. Go Hawks. See you guys later today where we'll have plenty more to talk about about the last preseason game. But I wanted to get this out now.